Thanks, April. Campaign contributions, money, has frequently been referred to as the mother's milk of politics. Exaggerated money, though, can distend the political process, producing mutant results. Political insiders here in Rhode Island have long been accused of practicing contribution gluttony in their local campaigns. Last week's election saw a clear example of that aberration in terms so stark it begs for further examination. Catherine Gregg, writing in the Providence Journal, closely followed the contest for the Rhode Island House seat in District 15. That's the race which pitted current speaker Nick Mattiello against a strong challenger and attorney Steve Frias. As speaker, Mr. Mattiello was in line for substantial campaign contributions from lobbyists traditional big Democrat donors, and even other members of his own caucus. In a state where the average house raise costs only $15,000, Kathy Gregg rightly asked the question of how the speaker managed to spend over $100,000 in this race as he reported to the Board of Elections. Sure, his lawn signs were in evidence around the district and beyond, but he didn't buy up every page of every edition of the Cranston Herald as he might have with that kind of a spend. So where did the money go? One answer came to light as a result of Ms. Gregg's inquiry. There had been a Republican primary for this seat where Frias met anti-vaccine activist Shauna Lawton to determine who would face Mattiello. Following her loss in that undercard bout, Ms. Lawton not only publicly endorsed Nick Mattiello, but she sent a mailer with that message to most, if not all, of the voters in District 15. Again, Kathy Gregg's reporting pointed out that following the primary, Lawton reported only $43.34 remaining in her campaign account. Where did the one or two thousand dollars come from to pay for a five thousand piece mailer? As an activist in the anti-vaccine movement, Ms. Lawton is also an active member of a number of blogs and chat rooms on this topic. It didn't take much sleuthing for Greg to unearth several posted conversations in which the Republican Lawton explained to her cohorts that she would endorse the Democrat Mattiello in return for his promise of early consideration of legislation in the next session which would be favorable to their cause. Aha, quid pro quo, or in English, that's a no-no, Nick. All this points up the lopsided barriers challenges to the supermajority have always faced in trying to balance the chambers in our General Assembly. Those barriers are easily financed by the largesse commanded by those in House and Senate leadership. Since paying for excessive insurance against political loss is so easy, it's also easy for members of leadership to cross a line or two in protecting themselves. This may be the most public transgression of this nature in the recently concluded election, but it is certainly not the only example. April, 